Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you to yet another edition of What Works, What Doesn't and Why Insights from Evaluation. And this session is a little bit more special. Of course, we are going to be talking about ADB support for climate change, which in itself is a very big issue. Uh, but today is also special because today is the last What Works session that DGIED Marvin Taylor Dotman will be moderating. And Marvin, I'd like to take this platform to actually thank you and we are full of gratitude for what you've done for communication and dissemination of evaluations, not just within ADB, but outside as well, which has ensured that our evaluations are actually influential and accessible. Marvin, thank you very much for that. And uh, let's go straight up ahead and uh, talk about the business of the day. Uh, the report that we mentioned, it urges ADB to take a stronger leadership role on climate action in Asia and the Pacific region. A region which, as you all know, both is a high contributor to global greenhouse gas accumulation and a casualty to the impacts of climate change and weather-related calamities. We are happy to note that since the publication of the evaluation, ADB has taken positive steps to raise its ambition on climate action. And this signals a serious intent by ADB to demonstrate stronger leadership in the region. And with that, I'd like to invite the team leader of the evaluation, ADB support for climate change, uh, to present some of the key findings and recommendations of his report. Garrett Kilroy, it's over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Saleya, and um, good afternoon, everybody from Manila. My name is Garrett Kilroy. Um, I, I am the team leader for, for this evaluation, and I'd just like to acknowledge uh, our team and uh, my co-team leader, Andrew Brubaker. In terms of outline, we're going to cover the following topics. I'll provide the five key messages from this evaluation. I'll discuss the ADB's uh, uh, climate strategy and the portfolio leading from that strategy, um, our findings on performance and results and on ADB's organization for delivery, and finally on rec recommendations. So this evaluation had five key messages. Uh, urgent and scaled up action, ambition and support are warranted in the Asian Pacific region, given the accelerated pace and profound impacts of climate change caused by human activity. Number two, ADB's support to developing member countries on climate action over the evaluation period has been relevant in its intent and ambitions have increased. Yet ADB is not fully leveraging its potential to play a stronger leadership role on climate action in the region. Number three, a board endorsed climate action framework to supplement OP3 with a clear focus on climate outcomes at both country and project levels is needed to, to support DMCs and effectively align ADB's operations with the Paris Agreement. Number four, the results achieved by ADB on mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions were impressive. Meanwhile, results were more limited for adaptation and its financial targets have not yet been met. And number five, ADB's systems, processes and staffing, including for private sector engagements, will need to significantly improve for it to meet its climate objectives. So this slide summarizes our findings on ADB's climate strategy and the portfolio leading from that strategy. And when we looked at ADB's strategies across the evaluation period, we found that ADB's strategic approach to climate change has evolved over many decades. It was relevant in its intent and ambitions have increased over the evaluation period. We did identify some strategic gaps and these include ambitious targets for climate share and adaptation, guidance for sectors and non-sovereign investments and a clear roadmap to align ADB operations with the Paris Agreement. We also found that country partnership strategies have improved their strategic focus on climate yet they lacked supporting country diagnostics on climate change issues and strong results frameworks. Overall, the portfolio for ADB climate finance over the period amounted to 40.2 billion. The upper figure highlights that South Asia accrued the largest amount of climate finance and the least in the Pacific. The figure also notes the dominance of mitigation in the portfolio, um, except for the, for the Pacific, which had roughly equal volumes of adaptation and mitigation. The lower slide highlights the, that mitigation was supported mostly by investments in the energy and transport sectors. And adaptation was mainly supported through the transport, agriculture and natural resources and urban water sectors. 
Moving on to performance and results. Um, the portfolio is not very mature, but for completed projects where we have validations, um, climate investments have performed well with an 81% success rate. When we delved a bit deeper in the climate components of over 250 uh, investments, we found that the results frameworks need strengthening. Only about half of mitigation projects and just under a third of adaptation projects included climate-related outcome indicators. We also noted that recent large mitigation projects in the transport sector attri attribute their entire project cost to climate finance. Yet in these projects, uh, the esti estimated uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions were quite modest. We also noted that ADB's social cost of carbon is mostly used for the appraisal of energy and transport projects and rarely for investments in agriculture or urban water. In terms of results, uh, mitigation efforts dominated the completed portfolio with dem demonstrable reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and associated co-benefits such as uh, cleaner air quality. Adaptation efforts, though smaller in share and, and often not well tracked, are improving resilience by climate proofing infrastructure. We also highlight technical assistance and policy based uh, loans that are enhancing developing member uh, capacity to manage climate risks. And these innovative and transformative approaches warrant wider deployment across sectors and regions. This slide summarizes our findings on ADB's organization for delivery. We found that ADB's processes and systems to support the delivery of its climate change objectives have improved over the evaluation period. And ADB's climate risk management framework has been instrumental in mainstreaming climate into operations. We did found that the quality of climate risk and adaptation assessments was variable and lacked consistent oversight and uniform standards. And we also note that climate finance accounting at ADB is largely an ex-ante exercise that favors tracking financing targets over tracking climate outcomes. In terms of staffing, as, as the figure illustrates, um, climate expertise at ADB is highly centralized in SDCC. And the share of climate staff and operations departments, including resident missions is low compared to other mainstream thematic areas like gender and like for environment. And then finally on recommendations, um, our evaluation uh, led to six recommendations based on strategic uh, operational and institutional issues. In terms of strategic issues, in recommendation one, ADB should raise its climate ambition and develop a board endorsed climate action framework to supplement OP3 and clearly articulate ADB's path for alignment with the Paris Agreement. In recommendation two, ADB should ensure that country partnership strategies are informed by country specific climate change diagnostics. In terms of operational issues, in recommendation three, ADB should increase its focus on climate outcomes in design and strengthen climate guidance, including on climate finance accounting, greenhouse gas accounting, and for the private sector. In recommendation four, ADB should leverage its final financial resources using the full breadth of available instruments, including PBLs, RBLs, and support for development financing institutions. And in recommendation five, ADB should enhance assistance to DMCs for policy development and capacity buildings to support delivery of their climate objectives. And finally, on institutional issues, in recommendation six, ADB should develop a one ADB approach to deliver its climate objectives, which strengthens staff resources and capacity and coordination elevated to senior management. So thanks for your attention. And if you would like to read more, the evaluation and the management response is available on the ADB website. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. And just to let you all know that Garrett will be around if you want to ask him uh, questions in the question and answer session. And let me now quickly introduce you to the panelists today. We have Karen Murray, Alternate Executive Director, Board of Directors, Kenichi Yokoyama, Director General, South Asia Department, Warren Evans, Special Project Facilitator, Office of the President, and today's session will be moderated by Marvin Taylor Dortman, Director General, Independent Evaluation Department. Marvin, it's over to you now. Thank you very much, Saleha. <laughs> and uh, congratulations to you and to your team for so consistently uh, uh, bringing to us this very important uh, events 
to discuss issues that are critical for the accomplishment of the mission of this institution. Congratulations, and I trust that you will continue with the same energy going forward. I very much appreciate uh, your kind words at the beginning. Yes, it is my uh, last one, and I couldn't have thought of a of a, a topic more meaningful than this to end uh, my term uh, in uh, this uh, a, a series of discussions with the staff and management in the institution. We're talking about a. a I don't think I am I'm wrong when I, if I say uh, we're talking about a dramatic topic for not only the region, for, uh, but for the world. The last uh, intergovernmental uh, panel uh, report on climate change is absolutely overwhelming. Uh, climate change, uh, in the, a warming uh, of uh, the globe is of human nature, is uh, being caused by human uh, activity. And it's only us that can reverse uh, the situation that we ourselves have uh, created. And as the president has said in uh, his uh, latest uh, intervention raising the, the, the aspirations of the institution. Uh, climate change, the, the fight on climate change will be won or lost in Asia. That's why this discussion, this conversation, this exchange is so critical for us in ADB. And we have today a uh, very distinguished panel I hope that everyone who is here uh, with us participating, take advantage of this opportunity to ask your question uh, to this uh, panel that we have today to discuss this uh, very important issue for the world and for the region and for ADB. Let me start uh, first with, uh, with Warren. Uh, Warren, I know you are in DC, you have been in this discussions that are taking place uh, in DC on this topic. Uh, and uh, you were there precisely uh, with the president when he announced uh, the race in uh, the aspirations of uh, the institution, which uh, we're all very proud and very happy um, about this. Uh, and now COP26, this massive, uh, a, periodic uh, meeting is taking place soon at the beginning of next uh, next month, very, very close uh, to us now. Uh, and at the same time, the bank has uh, committed to aligning with Paris, uh, both in sovereign and non-sovereign operations. Uh, and now this great announcement that the president has made. Can you talk to us a little bit about the preparations of uh, the bank uh, towards uh, COP26. Uh, uh, what, what is the bank intending to achieve in COP26? Uh, and talk a little bit about the alignment. What does that mean, this alignment with uh, the Paris Agreement? Uh, Warren, please. Okay, thanks very much, Marvin, and, and uh, congratulations on uh, having climate change as your final final uh, output and, and hopefully a major outcome from, from uh, your work at ADB. Uh, you couldn't have picked a more relevant and, and uh, important topic. Um, it's a pleasure to be here uh, today. And uh, I, I wanna, before I answer your question, I just wanna reflect a little bit. I, I joined, the first time I joined ADB, it was 1988 as an environment specialist. And we published a, a paper on the economics of sustainable development in 1990 that highlighted the importance of uh, and the risks of climate change and the importance of ADB taking action on that. Um, when I left uh, in 2003, quite frankly, we hadn't done very much. We were, we were getting active in, in the carbon finance business. Um, 
we were doing some very interesting work on, on mitigation and, and trying to bring new technologies in, but it was a, it was a, a snail's pace uh, uh, compared to uh, the focus on other issues. So when I, when I reflect today and I look at the recommendations of the IED report, I'm actually quite impressed with how much progress ADB's made uh, over the years. Um, and in particular, the last year, uh, the commitment to align with the Paris Agreement is a major, major um, commitment and, and step in the uh, right direction. I think that the, that the Paris alignment, uh, the commitment for the Paris alignment will actually drive ADB in the direction that IED has recommended. Uh, so many of the recommendations uh, are, are going to be achieved, I think, as a result of uh, a full commitment for Paris alignment. It means that we're, gonna, we're going to transform our portfolio. Uh, we're going to screen our, our operations in a different way. Um, we're going to have to staff up to be able to do that and retrain some staff to, to focus on climate. So I, you know, I think that this is all moving in the right direction. The president's announcement uh, two days ago that that we we still have our eighty billion dollar commitment. Uh, that's that's embedded in uh, the the twenty thirty strategy, but the ambition to hit a hundred billion dollars is is not just that number wasn't just taken out of thin air. Uh, there was a lot of analytical work behind that, and and I I firmly believe that that's something that ADB can, should, and will accomplish. Um, and I think we'll exceed that. I think the demand over the coming years is going to be much greater um, from, from our clients. Uh, and, and particularly the second half of this decade is going to see a complete transformation in uh, the kinds of work we have to do. We won't talk about adaptation projects anymore. We'll just do at it. Everything we do will be focused on climate resilience or low carbon in some, one way or another. Uh, so that leads me to, to the response on COP26. Um, our objective in COP26 is, it, you know, typically, and this is very different COP because it is a, a hybrid COP. We're not going to have the opportunity to uh, interact with other stakeholders the way we normally would. Uh, which is unfortunate because we have a lot to offer on issues like Article 6 on, on uh, carbon markets, uh, carbon pricing. Uh, we have a lot to offer on, on uh, scaling up climate finance, uh, but we're not going to have the opportunity to actually interact that much with the negotiators, which is what we would normally do. So the focus this, this year is really to uh, have a few key side events uh, with a very high level participation from President Massa and, and, and finance ministers and others to really highlight some of the key new initiatives that ADB has underway. The, the energy transition mechanism being the, the biggest one, but we have issues like uh, new initiatives like Community Resilience Fund and so on. Um, these are all designed to not only take ADB to the next orbit on climate action and access to climate finance, but really to help our, our client countries and, and private sector clients to move in that direction. So our focus in, in, uh, in the COP is really going to be to uh, try and highlight where we're going with these initiatives and bring partners along. It's really about building the partnership uh, of all the stakeholders. Uh, we'll see how it works. It's going to be a very different COP than any I've ever participated in. Um, and, uh, but, but I'm confident that, that, uh, you know, number one, I think ADB will come out uh, shining, and uh, uh, and I think most important is our partnerships will be dramatically strengthened as a result of our engagement. So I'll stop there and happy to take any questions when the time comes. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you very much, Warren, for giving us this broad perspective of what the bank is is trying to do at this, as you call it, a different uh, uh, meeting. Uh, from from the ones that uh, we know have been taking place uh, over the past uh, years, uh, let, let's let's now talk about uh, more specifically about the region that uh, you saw in our report has been uh, been the object of uh, the largest investment by the institution in this in this area. This is South Asia. Uh, Ken, uh, you've been working in this region for a good number of years. And uh, can you uh, 
talk to us a little bit about the the demands for climate change investment in South Asia. How have you been addressing this demand? How are you planning to address this, this demand? What is driving this, this demand? Uh, in, in, in why, why is there seem to be a lower uh, demand and drive for adaptation or is more uh, lack of reaction of the institution to an actual uh, important demand in this area in the region. Ken. Uh, yeah, thank you, Marvin. I hope uh, you can hear me. Yeah, first of all, yes, yeah, perfect. Uh, we also thank uh, Marvin. I, I should also uh, say on behalf of all the HODs, uh, the excellent work that you have done. So I, I, I joined last year, but you have done this SPS and energy policy knowledge solutions and PPP and this one. So uh, I really felt, uh, you know, you are making a great uh, contributions, advising us uh, lots of lots of constructing uh, directions. So we are definitely moving to the a good direction in all these areas. So we thank you very much for this. So regarding this, uh, uh, this climate change, yeah, uh, SARD being the largest operations department in ADB uh, have been the, also the largest uh, climate change. So we have uh, done uh, 15.7 billion dollars over the past 10 years and about yeah uh, three quarters is uh, mitigation one fourth one quarter is adaptation and uh, so the recent trend last five years is also uh, nine billion uh, last year is uh, two billion so uh, so that means uh, actually about 32 percent of our operations is climate change uh, so uh, then, then we are now uh, increasing our ambitions. That means we, we need to further enhance by uh, about 10% or even more, uh, like 40%, or, uh, unless we get more funding. So uh, yeah, talking about the South Asia demand, uh, you're yeah, right to, you know, South Asia definitely, we have 1.5 billion people or income and uh, energy consumption is just one fifth of uh, developed countries. And uh, uh, so there's a huge uh, demand to address uh, climate change mitigation, uh, you know, fossil fuel uh, reduction uh, to work on this. And also, I would say all of the South Asia DMCs are, are ranked very high in terms of the vulnerability against climate change, uh, natural disasters, biodiversity, and so on and so forth. So there's uh, definitely huge opportunities here to work with. Uh, then uh, our challenge really is uh, to, uh, yeah, so how we uh, turn this, uh, translate these opportunities is a real demand. And uh, uh, I would say the greatest challenge for us is to translate, you know, opportunities to specific national level planning and uh, then, uh, then the project proposals. So when, when, when we, it's, it's, it's easy to talk about financing, but the real challenge is identifying uh, uh, projects and formulating the projects so that we can deliver uh, outputs and outcome in a, in a meaningful way. So that's something that we really need to uh, emphasize on in terms of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, demand and also delivery side. And, uh, but still, uh, I think uh, opportunity and demand is uh, still very large, uh, you know, which uh, ADB's uh, small resources cannot be, you know, uh, I mean, a, a, a substantial part. So we, we are really, really uh, emphasizing on, on the value addition of our operations. So we, we focus on urban transport, and not only establishing, uh, you know, metro infrastructure, but also linking it to, you know, urban planning and uh, municipal resource mobilization. So that's the, uh, you know, urban uh, development can be more systematically developed to more a sort of carbon uh, I mean, efficient uh, uh, lifestyle and economic activities. And the energy sector is also, uh, it's an interesting sector. Uh, we need to really create the market and uh, you know, our role is not just financing and uh, you know, our role is to, to, to try to create a market and business models uh, where the, this uh, you know, private sector can eventually take over. So we are now increasingly focusing on uh, this uh, uh, newer technologies like energy efficiency, electric uh, batteries, uh, EV, biofuel, solar irrigation, hydrogen, uh, so that our initial engagement can really create a business model that the private sector can, can take over. Of course, there are still, uh, you know, uh, uh, conventional uh, transmission projects, energy, I mean, uh, renewable evacuation, but, but those are, are something that, that I think is, is on the declining side. 
and, and then adaptation financing, you talked about, you know, we have only one quota. Uh, so historically, uh, this is the area, uh, I think uh, the priority in terms of, you know, when you talk about disaster prevention and the preparedness, uh, the, the demand has relatively small. And also countries like India used to have the concessional, uh, you know, resources like IDA uh, to uh, undertake this kind of activities. Uh, so and, and also our uh, operations uh, focus is more on, on uh, so far uh, what's called the climate proofing. Uh, so uh, so that means uh, we you know uh, account the climate financing just to uh, calculating the additional requirement and uh, uh, for, for, for for on top of the regular project uh, objectives. Uh, so that naturally it comes down to quite a small, uh, I would say, I mean, this, this is a very robust arrangement, but uh, we, we really need to uh, follow these guidelines. But uh, overall uh, demand side, uh, I think I would say uh, that uh, now the adaptation has been increasingly, increasingly uh, requested by the, the government, including uh, say a government of India is suggesting us to focus more and more on adaptation. So we really need to work on this. And uh, uh, like also recently we had a, a Bangladesh uh, CPS, but then we, we are aiming towards not only climate uh, as add-on uh, or mainstreaming, but more aiming uh, at projects that directly address the uh, climate change adaptation as Warren has mentioned. So uh, we are uh, contemplating, and our sector division already starting to discuss uh, potentially the uh, say policy-based loan to support the uh, say uh, you know uh, adaptation planning and uh, programming and uh, necessary incentive and, and mechanisms so on and so forth. So, so those are some latest that that we have been trying, and overall uh, we we are uh, uh, we should be and uh, hopefully uh, able to further uh, expand our uh, operations and climate change, particularly on the on the uh, adaptation side, but also mitigation for creating more value. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ken, for, for that uh, very, now bringing this whole thing of aspiration to, uh, to reality and what this means on the ground. Uh, I think the point that you made uh, is a really important one. One thing is, as you said, is to talk about finance, volume of finance and aspiration. The other is to create the actual projects that uh, will uh, be using this, uh, this uh, a additional supply uh, of finance. And uh, that's the hard part. And that's, uh, I know that that's, that's what you've been working on uh, for many, many years. And I sympathize with this difficult thing. Uh, now, let, let me now bring uh, Karen uh, to, the, to the conversation. Karen, we, we had a very, good discussion at DEC uh, uh, on this topic. And uh, you have been uh, very, very active uh, on, on the subject uh, and very vocal on the, on, on, on the need to take action on this, uh, on this uh, area. Um, what, what are your reactions about what the bank has done over the years? Uh, how do you see the bank evolving? Uh, your reactions? Uh, to this new announcement uh, at that time, uh, we spoke about, uh, we, I mean, AED uh, spoke about the need for greater uh, asp aspiration uh, level, uh, ambition, we spoke about, about ambition there. And uh, days later, uh, we get this very uh, positive uh, announcement from the president. What are your reactions about this whole uh, set of events and how the bank has been has been a, a addressing this very important issue. Um, thanks very much, Marvin, and um, a big thank you for inviting me to be a part of the panel. And this is a really critical topic, but um, it's a pleasure to be with you on on your last panel as well. Um, so let me start on that um, part about ambition and announcements. I guess what a difference um, a week makes, um, and particularly when you're in this kind of uh, lead up to a big event and, and the pre-COP announcement season. Um, so I don't think we can take full credit for um, the announcements based on deck last week. Um, as Warren said, there's obviously been a lot of analytical work happening for quite an extensive period of time. So I, I definitely recognize that. Um, but reflecting on the discussions that we had at deck last week, um, and I've had discussions 
discussions with other board colleagues since then. Um, and I, I think I can say that uh, right across the board, there's very strong support for the announcement that President Massa made this week um, to, to lift the ambition on, on climate action from its current level. Um, and from my perspective, you know, developing countries really need confidence that that long promised climate finance commitment of 100 billion a year will be delivered. And um, so I think anything that can make a strong contribution to building that confidence is, is really welcome at this point. Um, but, you know, while the, the headline was about the 100 billion and lifting up uh, from 80 to, um, to 100, um, there were other aspects of the announcements that I really appreciated and I just wanted to talk to. Um, the first is about the clear statement of our vision to be Asia Pacific's climate bank. Um, I think this clarity of vision is really needed to focus our efforts across the organisation, but also to attract the right stakeholders and partners to realise that, um, that vision. Um, in terms of the current ambition, you know, with the existing target under strategy 2030, to have 75% of all operations and um, supporting climate mitigation and adaptation, um, as well as the recent commitment, um, as Warren said, the major, major commitment to fully align all operations um, with the Paris Agreement in the next couple of years. And um, I absolutely think we should be Asia Pacific's climate bank. Um, the second area that I just wanted to um, really appreciate is the increased focus on adaptation. Um, as we know, the climate impacts are being felt uh, across the region now, and some of them will be um, irreversible, regardless of, of how high the climate mitigation efforts end up being. Um, so from my perspective, you know, looking back over the last 10 years, um, that we didn't achieve our stated ambitions on adaptation um, in recent years. And we sort of quietly downgraded um, the targets from 2 billion per annum by 2020. Um, so that was the area that I was most disappointed in. Um, but I do appreciate this area is really hard. So I just want to welcome the restated commitment to more focus on adaptation, um, including a greater level and share of our own finance for adaptation, um, as well as how to attract greater private finance towards adaptation efforts because I think that's been one of the toughest nuts to crack um, so far. So concessional resources um, will be really essential to overcoming um, adaptation reluctance, as DG Ken mentioned just before. Um, and I do really agree with Warren that um, in the coming years, uh, adaptation and resilience will just be built into everything we do rather than something that's kind of off to the side. So um, this brings me to a point that I made at DEC last week, um, and it touches on something uh, that I see kind of that's come up in the, uh, the questions from uh, the audience as well. Um, so from my perspective, ambitious public targets, headline numbers um, are really important for driving action. Um, but I do think that ADB needs to improve its effectiveness more generally, um, not just on climate, in terms of delivering on the implementation of various strategies and plans. Um, so that's delivering on the quantitative targets, but also on the, the quality in terms of the outcomes that will be achieved. Um, so I have a little bit of nervousness about increasing the overall climate finance ambition um, in the absence of ensuring that we're adequately resourced and adequately organized to deliver um, and focus on the right outcomes. Um, so, you know, someone asked a question about whether all of the organizational reforms that are going on might distract from the focus on adaptation and resilience. I actually think we need to put um, that right at the center of some of these reforms. And I think the, the reforms are essential if we're actually going to deliver. Um, so while I know there's support for higher levels of ambition, um, I've heard both myself and many other board members also ask for clear roadmaps for how ADB will deliver, particularly on knowledge, technology transfer, mobilizing uh, concessional and private finance, um, but also ensuring that we have the, the maximum impact in terms of climate outcomes. Um, so even though we didn't agree on everything last week, I did feel like we had consensus at the deck that a climate action roadmap needs to be developed with some urgency next year. Um, so there's no time to waste. And, and I think all of the board is looking forward to working with management on this. Thanks. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, yeah, I, I think fair, fair, fair enough. Um, a, a, we, can take credit, we cannot take credit either, right, uh, from the evaluation point of you uh, for this uh, announcement. But I think we all uh, add uh, to, uh, to the discussion and bring uh, comfort and, 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 and assurances uh, to the leaders of the organization that this is the right direction and the, the, the right uh, decision to make. Uh, I think uh, everyone has received this, this announcement uh, so positively. Uh, in uh, even if uh, there is no no cause and effect, there is a nice correlation uh, that we're all thinking about the importance of uh, uh, of this subject. Uh, it, thank, thank you, thank you very much for your your your, your perspective, Karen. Uh, there are a number of questions that uh, 
uh, our audience is already posing and some very specific to uh, some of you. Uh, uh, you uh, you've seen them, but before we address these questions and we go to the second part of our conversation, let's bring in the views from the front line and hear some of our colleagues that are uh, there uh, at front front line uh, of operating and facing uh, concrete problems, uh, bringing their views to us and to the audience. <music> I agree with ID's recommendation to focus on climate change outcomes in uh, operations, specifically in uh, infrastructure projects. Our new irrigation project in Uzbekistan is focused on climate adaptive water resources management in RLC Basin. As one ADB team, we will enhance capacity of government agencies in design, monitoring, and evaluation of climate indicators in development projects. I agree with the larger recommendations of the IAD. In India, we implemented environmentally appropriate innovative hybrid solutions, combining hard and soft measures suitable for the Indian coastal protection and management. During the implementation, the climate change impact assessment was mainstreamed in the project design. We understand that upscaling of the cost-effective nature-based solutions approach is vital for building climate resilience. Also, we see working with communities, dune care groups, and NGOs as essential for awareness and larger acceptability. We note that the coordinated actions are required for climate adaptation measures dovetailing these with the economic activities along the coast, which may continue. Lastly, leveraging private sector strength has been a challenge, but the potential can be harnessed with appropriate policy actions at government level and with one ADB approach. The recommendations on the PIN ADB efforts to integrate climate change mitigation and adaptation in the design of its development projects, highlighting the importance of providing sufficient climate finance, technology, and capacity development support to ADB member countries. To that end, ADB will increase the quantity of projects focusing on climate change, disaster resilience, and environmental sustainability. The new country partnership strategies, which serve as the strategic framework for ADB operations, are turning increasingly green, reflecting these efforts. In some countries, like for instance the People's Republic of China, about 90% of the new operations target environmentally sustainable development and climate change adaptation and mitigation. I fully agree with the recommendation that the country partnership strategies and programming should be informed by country-specific climate change assessments. This is very relevant for the Pacific, where there is a clear need to scale up adaptation action. The traditional way of implementing climate resilience measures on a project-by-project -project basis really misses some of the opportunities to address, for example, cross-sectoral climate challenges. So more upstream adaptation planning is the only way to significantly scale up adaptation finance and the long-term results on the ground. I also think it is important for ADB to focus more on the actual climate outcomes rather than just on the dollar amount of climate finance. Thank you very much. Thank you to our colleagues who are expressing their views. We will continue doing this, bringing, bringing voices uh, from the field uh, to, to uh, nurture our, our, our discussion here. And, and uh, there are a number of questions, again, that the audience is posing to you specifically. Uh, and uh, let me bring, again, 
uh, can first. Uh, and uh, at any point, uh, when it's your turn, you obviously can address uh, the questions that are there uh, in addition to whatever I have in mind here to, to, to ask you. And uh, Hannah precisely uh, is pointing out, pointing out to one of the issues that I wanted to ask you about, uh, Ken. Uh, one of the key things going forward uh, to address uh, the risk of uh, climate change uh, is is transitioning from uh, a, or transitioning transitioning to low carbon uh, energy, right? In, in low carbon, uh, as we call it, uh, resilient economies. Uh, in uh, in your view, very concrete uh, from the field, what can the bank do to accelerate this transition? Um, in in what role? As Hannah was saying, should uh, CPSs play uh, in this in this respect? Uh, and there are very very specific uh, question uh, to you on your uh, your approach, your plans for the Maldives. There is this group uh, of uh, countries in our constituency uh, that, as Karen has said, demand uh, demand quick, urgent action uh, on adaptation. This is the atoll countries uh, that are facing the highest risk probably in the world uh, because of, a, because of a climate change. What are your plans? What are your views uh, about this one specifically that you have in your own region? Yeah, thank you for these questions. Uh, yeah, first let me answer uh, your questions. Uh, yes, this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, low carbon resilient economy building. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah we're we are trying to, uh, I mean, at, at this moment, it's a sort of a two branched approach. One is the internally, uh, we have formed a, a departmental task force to look at uh, regional perspectives, potentially, we try to explore uh, the regional level. Uh, road mapping for the climate change mitigation and adaptation in the region, and uh, with uh, some consultation with the uh, government and uh, stakeholder DP uh, contacts at at, at a field level. Uh, so that that's one side that we internally try to uh, come up with some sort of uh, perspectives of our own, but at uh, country level, uh, operational level. Uh, we, at, at least uh, in most of the countries and in many sectors, ADB is a lead development partner. Uh, so from that angle, uh, I, I think ADB is well positioned in, in, our, in our DMCs uh, to really facilitate the dialogues on national level uh, climate change policy and planning framework. And uh, such as we talk a lot nowadays on the updating the uh, national, uh, I mean, uh, 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 intended or it is determined uh, commitment uh, uh, in, in line with the Paris Agreement. And uh, also oh, that's national level, sometimes India case, state level plans for uh, mitigation and uh, adaptation and energy, uh, you know, or carbon transition and, and so on. Uh, but also, uh, I mean, we, we talk so much about the emphasis and uh, we really, you know, as ADB, as Climate Bank wants to really pursue, but uh, we really also need to take into account the sensitivities uh, that uh, needs to be kept in mind in this process. And uh, particularly many DMC stakeholders, including some academicians, are still uh, pretty much, you know, emphasizing on the common but uh, differentiated transition. Uh, so what you know i mean uh, zero or, or i mean carbon uh, declaration is good but what 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 to do there uh, with this accumulated uh, you know uh, fossil fuel uh, emission that has already caused damage and and also there's an action uh, a lot of you know just transition so when you talk of a coal transition in india uh, we always need to have to talk about uh, you know three million uh, coal miners who, whose uh, work uh, livelihood to be affected who are really concentrated in these uh, uh, lowest income states 
Uh, so, uh, but that doesn't mean that we, we you know, uh, I mean, we, we, we should step aside, but uh, really, really engaging those stakeholders and coming up with the uh, real solutions that is uh, workable and uh, agreeable by everyone is extremely important. Uh, so that's uh, something that uh, we, we would be doing in our country level consultations. And of course, uh, uh, there are many, many other stakeholders, particularly development partners. So we need really need to uh, consult with that. And uh, I would say CPS provides an excellent opportunity uh, to undertake such kind of holistic and uh, comprehensive consultations. And uh, uh, I, although I, I think uh, uh, IED report was a bit critical about, uh, I mean, a CPS quality, but uh, in SAD, uh, in the recent uh, CPS, like Maldives and Alastia and Bangladesh this year, uh, we did a very thorough uh, uh, climate change diagnosis and also uh, established a sort of a roadmap for our engagements in, in mitigation and uh, adaptation. And uh, based on which we have identified a couple of, uh, I mean, uh, potential opportunities for uh, adaptation, you know, objective uh, projects, uh, and also discussing potential PDR and so on. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I would say CPS is an excellent opportunity and uh, your uh, IED's recommendation is quite right. Uh, to to really you know emphasize on CPS undertaking a very thorough road mapping exercise and of course in consultation with the other stakeholders and the other development partners. Uh, in case of Maldives, yeah, last year we had a CPS and this issue came out and uh, yeah, adaptation all our projects uh, we, we we provide in terms of infrastructure uh, fully take into account that. And, uh, uh, but also uh, we are supporting uh, through our technical assistance that uh, Maldives is a part of the small island countries uh, group in this, uh, uh, I mean, the, the dialogue process. So we are uh, supporting them in that context, but also uh, one of the, uh, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, program that we envisage is we also want to uh, identify uh, really, really climate change adaptation oriented programs in, in, in Maldives. So that could be, a, a, again, we are uh, anticipating, uh, you know, policy based on not necessarily climate change focus, but uh, as a part of our program lending, uh, that is our, our, our that, that kind of, you know, the dialogue could be considered. So that's uh, what, what I can say for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ken. I, I think yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, tra the transition to low carbon will have consequences, uh, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, not only the positive ones that we are aspiring, but we will have other negative social consequences, as you rightly pointed out. Um, uh, in, in, indeed, I mean, CPS is as, uh, glad that you say that, uh, that they play the role that we see also in, in, in IED. Uh, let, let me now uh, come back to Warren about uh, actions going forward. And, and, and you, you can at, le uh, at once refer to some of uh, the questions that are, have been posed by our audience. Uh, that there's the uh, expectation that management will uh, will come up with an action um, a framework uh, on climate that would complement OP3. Uh, what, what do you think that this has to contain? Uh, what are the key elements that this has to contain? Um, in, uh, in, uh, what, is, what, what would be the, what the implications on these actions that the bank will, uh, will implement going forward? Uh, of uh, the CTI uh, initiative and the number of the other initiatives that the bank is undertaking at this time, as, as some of our colleagues are asking, what are what could be the implications uh, and, and how will the bank uh, use better use the modalities that that it has uh, to strengthen its interventions in this area? Warren, please. Okay. Thanks, Marvin. I, you know, I think that the uh, there are a couple of ways to, to answer this. One is the, the most critical transformation for ADB really is to continue the movement towards 180B. That's, that's by far the most important. We have to, we have to share resources across the bank, uh, expertise in particular. Um, no single department is going to have adequate capabilities to deliver uh, on this agenda. So I, I think that's the first uh, 
first thing to focus on. And I think all the reforms that we're talking about are designed to make 180B work uh, better and, and faster. And so in my mind, the, the reforms that are being looked at, uh, whether it's cultural transformation or, or an organization, you know, adjustments in the organization, all will strengthen our ability to deliver on the climate agenda. Um, and, and I know that that's part of the, certainly part of the focus. Uh, in terms of the, the, the roadmap or, or the action plan or whatever we call it, what we need to do is do a much better analysis of what the barriers are for us to achieve the, the objectives we've got on climate. Um, and, and that action plan will be designed to overcome those barriers, uh, whether it's staffing, whether it's uh, you know getting the right expertise in the right place, um, strengthening upstream analytical work, um, all of all of the elements that that we uh, actually that that the voices from the field talked about uh, that they're doing um, are are the things that we need to make the norm not not these can't can no longer be really interesting special uh, things that we highlight, they need to be the norm. Uh, and that's, that's the direction I think that we're going. So, um, so the action plan will focus on how we, we move from, from uh, doing the right thing in a few places sometimes to those actions and, and approaches being the norm. Um, if I could just, I wanna answer the, the question on, on uh, the lending modalities as well that was raised. Uh, the, the analysis that came up with the 100 billion uh, ambition certainly does anticipate a, an increase over the decade um, in demand for climate focused PBLs, uh, RBLs, and also uh, sector development program lending, um, which, which I think will become a, a very uh, important modality for, for us to be able to deliver both both the kind of policy reforms and institutional reforms um, or enable countries to deliver the policy and institutional reforms, but also do things on the ground at the same time. Um, and, and so I think that there is an anticipation in that uh, analysis that there will be an, an increase in, in uh, uh, policy-based lending. Uh, there's also an anticipation that there will be a substantial increase in private sector operations. And, and that, of course, uh, you know, we talk about the challenge there, um, but I think that there are ways to overcome the challenges, the barriers there, and, and so we anticipate that happening. Uh, but the, it's not just lending modalities that are going to deliver, and it's not just, I, I think Karen is absolutely right. I mean, it's the 100 billion is important, but that's not what we should be focused on. Uh, we need to be focused on, on the outcomes and scaling up and accelerating uh, outcomes. So in, in about uh, five minutes, uh, at the uh, Convention for Biological Diversity Conference of Parties, the COP uh, in Kunming, um, we will announce a new uh, regional flyways initiative. Um, it is, it's a biodiversity COP, but the reality is that, that it's a major partnership. It's designed over a 30 year period. Uh, that partnership will conserve, be, building on experience in China, uh, wetland conservation in China, that initiative will, will result in the protection rehabilitation of thousands of hectares of wetland that are absolutely critical for climate adaptation, for climate resilience. So the, the co-benefits for climate change of this biodiversity initiative are phenomenal, as are, as, as are the benefits of, of poverty reduction. Uh, so that's where we need to be going. We need, it's not all about what ADB does and, uh, with our money. It's about what we do with our, our, uh, our capacity to bring people, countries and, and partners together to scale up and accelerate major initiatives that have major climate benefits. Um, so we need to focus on both. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Warren. Uh, in, in, in what you have said is, is, is precisely a perfect introduction from, for what I wanted to ask uh, Karen. Uh, money is not enough. Results, uh, results in the end is what counts, is what we say too. But, uh, but the point that Warren is making is linked to the point that you were making at the beginning of the bank, having ambition, having a clear vision, being uh, uh, a, a leader. Uh, 
uh, being a leader uh, as a climate uh, as a climate uh, change uh, bank uh, in the region. Uh, what what is it needed for the bank, in your view, uh, to become the real leader in the region in this uh, in this field? Um, it, it may be already exercising leadership, uh, but we say that uh, the bank is still not leveraging all its potential. What, in your view, uh, if you would agree with this statement, as you were saying at the beginning, what is needed? What extra mile is real is needed? Um, yeah, thanks very much, Marvin. Um, yeah, I do agree. And I did talk a bit about this at, at the deck last week as well. Um, I really think that ADB has got so much potential um, to, to play a really transformational role. Um, and actually being inside of ADB, I see that a whole lot more than I did as a bilateral development partner working with ADB. Um, so I think that means that we actually need to sell what we can offer and what we can do um, much better, even to quite close uh, development partners. Um, so, you know, there's a, a range of things. We've got scale, we're big, we're not too big, the toolkit, um, the, the shareholder base, um, the trust that we've got from our DMCs, but also other stakeholders, you know, to be that honest broker uh, that Warren was talking about, um, regional cooperation being sort of at the heart of what we do, our core purpose. Um, so to really fulfill that potential, um, I do actually think a lot of it is about our institutional setting. So I agree with Warren's point about the importance of, of making um, 180B work better. Um, but one of the things um, that I also want to highlight is I think we need to break um, some of the incentives within an ADB that lead us to focus on spending our own money um, first, and, and we really prioritize that. So I think we say the right things in many documents, but I still think we overly fine, uh, focus on our own finance. Um, and I think staff still know and still get the signals that to get ahead in ADB, you need to process a large loan. Um, so I think until we address some of those incentives for uh, people who work within ADB, um, we're not really going to um, fulfill that, that transformational potential. And um, so again, I'm excited about the range of reforms that's underway. Um, it's difficult, but um, they're a real opportunity to address those institutional settings. Um, the other thing um, I wanted to highlight was um, I did appreciate that the evaluation focused on the political nature of the challenge. Um, so I think this tends to be a weaker area for ADB generally, and it's a little bit outside our comfort zone. Um, you know, people always talk about we're very we we're an apolitical organization, so we have to be you know apolitical. But I think sometimes that stops us working politically to, to tackle difficult challenges like this. Um, so I wanted to highlight what I see as being a really fantastic example of showing leadership on a politically difficult issue, um, and it's very fresh in my mind because we've just had a, an informal board briefing on it and um, the energy transition mechanism which everyone's hearing a lot about and it'll be a, a focus for us at, at COP26. Um, so if we don't address coal power generation in Asia then we have no hope of meeting the Paris Agreement's goals. Um, so I was really heartened by um, listening to board colleagues today and hearing such strong support from right across the board and um, for ADB to take bold action, to be innovative, to actually take risks. Um, and I had a lot of acknowledgement that it might not work, but we have to try. Um, and this is absolutely not about ADB's own financing. This is really bringing together all of the advantages um, that I think give ADB a you know, unique role in, in the region and really allow it to, to be transformational. So really excited to see, um, see where that goes. And um, uh, I think, you know, just to see the, the strong support from all shareholders is really impressive. Thanks. Thank you very much, Karen. As, uh, as usual, colleagues, there's never enough time to talk about this uh, so highly crucial uh, topics, and especially one like this. Uh, you will continue with this discussion for sure. Uh, I will follow up on, uh, on uh, what you will be doing in, in, the in the future. Again, I'm proud of what the institution have been doing and proud about this new announcement and the stronger commitment to address this very uh, serious issues, issue that is affecting the world and particularly our region. As we said, this, the, the region is not only a, a major contributor, but it's also a major uh, casualty of uh, the uh, consequences of our climate change. We have heard colleagues at the bank uh, for uh, co uh, COP26 will seek to uh, feature what uh, it is been doing in some critical uh, uh, areas and bring other partners together. We heard uh, also that finance is important, uh, but uh, it is also 
uh, hard and a, and a difficult work to do is to create projects to use this finance. Uh, that uh, policy lending is also important to support investment uh, specifically. We heard that ambition is fundamental, uh, that, uh, that not only ambition, but clear vision as to where the bank is going uh, in the future is critical for the bank to uh, fulfill its mission adequately. We heard also that uh, low transition to, or transition to low carbon is, 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 is needed but it, also, it, import, it is also important to take care of the consequences uh, of uh, this transition, social consequences and economic consequences uh, that would affect uh, our countries, our DMCs. We also heard that money uh, is, of course, uh, very important. This effort that the institution is making is, is commendable, but that's not the end intervention of the bank is what, what's more important is bringing others to the other. Uh, 100 billion is small uh, it, it, it is in, in, in perspective of what the world has to do and our region has to do. Bringing and convening others is more important. And, fi and, and finally, uh, we heard that uh, the final solution of this issue is uh, is uh, is political. This is a political uh, issue, but that the bank, precisely in this area, can play a fundamental role and is already doing so. Uh, all the very best uh, wishes to all of you. We thank our panelists, Karen. Thank you very much. You've always been a great partner uh, uh, with us in these events. Ken, you too. You mentioned so many events that uh, you have uh, been participating in. And Warren, thank you so much for all the work that you guys do. The best, best wishes to all of you and to all our colleagues who have been uh, with us uh, during this uh, event and to all our friends, my friends and my colleagues here in ADB. Best wishes to all of you. Thank you so much. A big applause to our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Warren, for staying at this time. <laughs> Take care. Congratulations. Thank you, Garen. Great, you. great job. And Nathan as okay. well. And congratulations to Saleha and Twinkle for bringing us together. Thank you. Thank you.